was to uh, summarize the previous portions. I think uh, he is not there. Anyway, uh, let me just uh, uh, summarize the main points that we have studied uh, in the in the previous class. That is, uh, uh, we have been studying from uh, uh, book of Revelation chapter 20, especially from verses 11 to 15. And the main point was the sevenfold judgments in Bible, like uh, the judgment of the cross, the judgment of the sinning believers, the judgment of the believer's work, and judgment of uh, uh, the Israel, judgment of the Gentile people, and the judgment of the Satan and his angels, and also the judgment on the great white throne. And that was the main topic that, that we have been discussing in the previous class, the final judgment of the wicked. Okay, And also we studied uh, about the differences between the white throne judgment and the present day court system. And uh, we have been discussing all those things in the uh, la, I mean, uh, last class, especially. So uh, today, uh, let us uh, begin our I mean, uh, class, today's class, uh, by reading uh, Revelation chapter 20, uh, verse 15. So we are starting today's class with uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. Let us read that verse once again. Elsa, if you're ready, you can read that verse. Then we will be uh, moving on to the uh, topic. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Okay. So what is that? Here, we read that if anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, he will be thrown into the lake of fire. We know that uh, when we study the, the Bible, there are around 15 books mentioned in Bible, which contains various records. So... Uh, totally, there are 15 books which is mentioned in the Bible, which contains various records of many, many people, many things or something, okay, especially the word of God. So we are not going to study about all of those books, but I think I already mentioned in the last class that uh, there are mainly three books in heaven, which can be used to judge the people, okay, judging the people means the both believers and the unbelievers. But I feel it is better to give you a little more detail about those books in heaven that may be helping you to clarify some of your doubts regarding uh, the, the court system and the mother of judgment by God, which is going to happen uh, uh, right after uh, the, the second coming of Jesus or after the, uh, the uh, thousand years of millennial kingdom. So the first book is the word of God. The word of God is the first book in, in heaven that God is going to use that book to judge the people. So the word of God means Bible is the covenant. That is the covenant book of God, which he made with the humanity. Okay, When you read Revelation chapter 20 and uh, 12, uh, chapter 20 verse 12, and also John chapter 12 verse 48, so we already read uh, uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. So uh, Elsa, you can read now John chapter 12, verse 48. John chapter 12, verse 48. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. Okay. So again, you know, the, we understand that Bible is the covenant book of God, which he made with the humanity. And also in Psalm number 119, verse uh, 89, it says that forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That means the word of God is there in heaven so that when Jesus is going to judge the people, Jesus is going to um, and use the Bible or the scripture or the word of God uh, uh, for judging the people because that word of God is settled in heaven for, he for forever and ever. So nobody can change that word or nobody can uh, uh, add something into that word because already it is written, it is, it is recorded in, in heaven. So in Bible, there are, there are many things included which, uh, uh, which could, uh, could uh, lead a sinner to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. 
okay, both in the New Testament and the Old Testament. There are many things which is included uh, with a purpose that uh, the people, the, the sinners should come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, okay, in the New Testament and also in the Old Testament. For example, God's love is included in the Bible. Mercy of uh, the, the character of mercy of God that is included. Holiness is included. The, the judgment is I mean, included and the judgment to the sin. Redemption is included. Hell and heaven is included. Even the eternal punishment also is included in the Bible. Why, why it is included? Because all through I mean, medias, the seniors could come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's the reason that in Bible, all these things are included. That is what we are studying now. So no one can say, I didn't know anything about these things. Okay. Suppose if someone says that, okay, never had a chance to read Bible. If someone says that, okay, I didn't have a chance to read Bible because I was in a, in a remote area and I didn't get a Bible in my hands. So I don't know what is Bible and I didn't, I never read it. Okay. Then he would have many opportunities to hear and to know about living God through the nature. Okay. Knowing about God could be happen by the nature and also through the creations of God. You know, the we can see many creations of God in, in this universe. So when you are studying about the creation and you will know about God, there is a God who created all these creatures. And also through the conscience of a person, he can understand there is a living God through the conscience. Okay, That is what we read in Romans chapter 2 verses 12 to 16. Uh, at least we will read maybe uh, uh, verses, verses 15 and 16. Romans chapter 2. Wait, wait, wait. Hmm. Hmm? What? Which letters is this? Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, Elsa, you can read uh, Romans chapter uh, 2, maybe verses 15 and 16 only. Yeah. They show that the work of law is written on their hearts, mm -hmm. while their con conscience also bears witness, yeah. and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even uh, excuse them. On that day, when, when according to my gospel, God judges the secrets of man by Christ Jesus. Okay, so when we read that portion, uh, Romans chapter uh, 2, verses 12, uh, 12 to 16. Okay, so I, I think already I uh, uh, taught you something about, uh, I mean, when a person is saying that, okay, I don't know anything about the Bible or I don't know anything about the living God, then uh, God can use, I mean, many things to I mean, tell him that these are the medias that you could use and the nature is there. The creations of God is there. Your conscience is there. So through that, you could understand there is a living God. At least you may know about when there is a God, okay? So with that conscience or with that creation or with that nature, God can, I mean, rule or God can judge the people and they cannot say that we didn't know that, okay? And the second book is the book of the deeds or works. The book of the deeds or the books of, book of the works, okay? So this is the book which is containing the box of a sinner. This is the book which is containing the box of a sinner. After the rapture of the church in heaven, there will be a judgment on our words and on our works, which is clearly recorded in this book. When you read Revelation chapter 12, verse 12, I mean, sorry, 20, verse 12, and Daniel chapter 7, verse 10, we'll be reading Daniel chapter 7, verse 10, Elsa. So, you know, there we understand after the rapture of the church in heaven, there will be a judgment, okay? That judgment is going to be on the words of the people and also on the words of or works of the people, okay? That which is very clearly, I mean, mentioned in uh, in these portions of the Revelation and also in Daniel. So we will read uh, maybe Daniel chapter 7, verse 10. We will understand that. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. The books were open. So this book also will be there. That means the book of the works of the people, okay? Especially the sinners, okay? The sinners. And also, um, uh, uh, the, the third book is the book of life, okay? The third book is the book of life. 
which is mentioned in this verse 20, verse 15. Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, it says that if anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, he will be thrown into the lake of fire, right? No, if anyone's name is not found written in the book of life, he will be thrown into the lake of fire. I mean, where Victor Pere, Sorgatile, I mean, a Jeevan de Pustatil, the Pitta Candilla Engel, a Victi and the Yenu, Meti Poyele, Talidum, Yanana, our Rega Pertirikin. Again, in Luke chapter 10, verse 20, it says that rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven, right? Luke chapter 10, verse 20 says, rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. So this is the right time that this is our time that we can rejoice in the presence of God because our names are recorded in heaven when we accepted Jesus as a personal savior. Amen. And again, Daniel chapter 12, verse one. No, in Daniel chapter, I mean, 12, verse one, it says that the people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Okay, even Daniel, the prophet Daniel was a was an Old Testament prophet, but he he was getting the revelation, he was getting the visions from the Lord, and God was giving that prophecies to him, and he was prophesying that the people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. That means he was understanding that there will be a book in the hands of God, which in which I mean the names of the, 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 the names of the believers are written, the names of the saints of God are written, okay? And again, in Philippians chapter four, verse three, Philippians chapter four, verse three, it is, it is that, that the Paul is saying that some names are written in the book of the life who labored with Paul. There were many people who were working with Paul and labored with Paul, ministering with Paul. And he says in Philippians chapter four, verse three, that there will be some names that names are written there, names are mentioned there. Those names will be written in the book of life who labored with him. I mean, even in the book of Revelation, you know, many times this word, the book of life, the book of life is mentioned. Okay, so there is a book of life in heaven and the, the names of the saints of God, the names of the believers, uh, the, the names of the children of God is written in that book. And even in the book of Revelation, we can see many times it is mentioned about the book of life, especially Revelation chapter 3, verse 5, 13, verse 8, and 17, verse 8, and chapter 20, verses 12 and 15. Okay. So we understand one thing, that when, when, a, when a person believes in Jesus and uh, accepts him uh, as his personal Savior and the Lord, his name will be written in the book of life. His name will be written in the book of life. That means no one can remove that name from that book. Only God who wrote it can do that. Okay? Nobody is able to remove the, remove the name of a believer or, or of a child of God from that book because God is the person who wrote it and nobody can remove that. Okay, so... Uh, that is what we understand from that verse. Especially now, we will, uh, I mean, go back to that, uh, I mean, verse 15 once again. And we will read that verse once again. And we have to study many things from there, that area. So that uh, once again, we will read that portion, maybe uh, verse 15, 2015. Yeah. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Okay. So. It, it is very clear that it is very clearly it is written that and if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life he will he will be thrown into the lake of fire now we are going to study about the lake of fire okay why apostle john is mentioning about the lake of fire and let us study a few things about this lake of fire as the eternal punishment i'm not going to uh, what is that uh, uh, i mean explain all those points but uh, you can you can take it down now from the screen. Is it visible? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. So the hell is known in different names in Bible. Okay, the hell or the lake of fire is known in different names in the Bible, like hell, outer darkness, lake of fire, the second death, the place or a uh, place of uh, uh, it's not place uh, uh, or but it's place of okay place of place of torment place of torment and eternal fire or eternal punishment and eternal destruction eternal destruction okay, these are the uh, these are the references that you can uh, get from the bible about the different names which is given for the for the hell okay or the lake of fire, hell, the place of torment, uh, eternal fire or eternal punishment, eternal destruction, uh, what is that, outer darkness, the second death, and all those things. Okay. No, uh, according to the uh, biblical uh, perspective, uh, hell is the final destination of those who reject Christ. We are coming to that point. No, when we study the Bible, we understand hell is the final destination of those who reject Christ. We know that there are many people accepting Jesus. There are many people uh, willing to follow the footsteps of Jesus and uh, obeying the word of God. At the same time, there will be another group. That group is denying the, I mean, uh, the divine power and the divinity of Jesus Christ. There are many people, I mean, uh, not believing that Jesus is the Lord or Jesus is the Savior. So there will be a group of people, I mean, who we who is rejecting Christ. So hell is going to be, or the the eternal punishment is going to be, or the the, the lake of fire is going to be the final destination of those people, those who are rejecting Christ Jesus. And hell is a place of eternal conscious punishment for the wicked people. Okay? Eternal conscious punishment will be the, the, the place for the wicked people, especially in Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. Okay? In Matthew chapter 25, verse uh, 46, uh, you can you can see there that Jesus says those condemned will go away into the eternal punishment, but the righteous into the eternal life. What is that? Okay, in Matthew chapter twenty-five, verse forty-six. I'm just I mean I mean I mean I'm saying that because of the I mean uh, because of the lack of time. You know, Jesus says those condemned will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into the eternal life. So the word eternal indicates that both states will be without an end. Okay. So the eternal, the word eternal, listen to that word eternal. That means both the eternal punishment, both the, the, the eternal life, both are going to be without end. That means it will be there forever and ever. That means the people of God, the children of God, the, 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 the saints of God will be with Jesus Christ for eternally. Okay? That is called the eternal life, the blessings, the blessings, the eternal blessings of the saints of people, saints of God. At the same time, the eternal punishment for the wicked people or the sinful people, sinful world. Okay, so the word, I mean, lake of fire is mentioned in Revelation chapter four, uh, Revelation maybe four times. Okay, especially the word lake of fire also is mentioned in the book of Revelation four times, okay? Which are those? Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. Revelation chapter 20, verse 10. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. And Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. These are the four uh, places that you can see the word lake of fire. And this lake of fire was prepared for the devil and his angels in Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. We'll read that verse. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Yes, are you ready? Uh, one second. Yeah. 41, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh... 
Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay, that means that eternal fire, that eternal fire or, or that lake of fire is prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay, but here we read that Jesus will say that to the, the people, those who are at the left of Jesus Christ, that means the people, those who rejected Jesus, those people will be cast into the lake of fire. That means actually God made the lake of fire. God made the, the, the hell uh, or the eternal punishment, the place of torment only for the devil and his angels, okay, the fallen angels. But at the same time, same time, God, Jesus is going to put or the cost all these wicked people or the sinner, sinners people into that same place only because they did not accept Jesus as their personal savior. But when, when man becomes sinner, man was willfully choosing to go to the lake of fire. Okay, So God prepared this lake of fire for devil and his angels. But we understand when man became sinner, when man fallen, then he was willfully choosing to go to the lake of fire. You know, so when you study the book of Revelation, according to the book of Revelation, first of all, the beast and the false prophet, that means the beast and the false prophets, they are the uh, two, um, what is that, uh, two members of the satanic trinity. They will be cast into the lake of fire. Then after thousand years of millennial kingdom, Satan, the leader of the satanic trinity also will be cast into the lake of fire. So we studied about the trinity of Satan, just like, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, they, uh, I mean, Satan is trying, Antichrist is trying to forfeit. That means Antichrist is trying to imitate uh, Jesus Christ or the, God, the divine trinity. The divine trinity is Father God, Son Jesus Christ and, and um, uh, uh, Holy Spirit. But at the same time, satanic trinity is written, mentioned in the book of Revelation, that is beast and the false prophet and Satan or Antichrist. Okay, so these are the satanic people. So these, I mean, uh, uh, three groups of people will be cast into the lake of fire. Then after the, the, the white throne judgment, okay, that means, um, you know, after the white throne judgment means uh, 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 before, before the, uh, uh, the, I mean, uh, white throne judgment, there will be thousand year of millennial kingdom. Okay, so after that thousand years, and during the time of the white throne judgment, death and Hades and all the sinners will be cast into the lake of fire. That is what we read there in, in uh, chapter 20, verse 14. Okay, so everybody will be cast into the lake of fire. The angel, the, the fallen angels, that means the satanic armies, and also the wicked, wicked people, and also the sinners, and the and the, and the death and the hate is everything. Everything will be cast into the lake of fire, except the children of God, except the the believers of God. So that is what we read in Revelation chapter twenty, verse fourteen, that death and hate will be thrown into the lake of fire, and this is the second death. Okay, this is the second death. That means what is the second death? The lake of fire is the second death. Why? And how it comes like that? Death and Hades will be thrown into the lake of fire. When Maranathayim, Padalathayim, ee thipogeleke thalliyidum, enna parnyadhandi artham, adhanu shesham pinnuri maranam illa ennu ulla dhaan. Arkum maranam illa. A lake of fire kidakkan na varukum illa, alla at varukum illa. Uru maranath inda avasthe nyingi pogun da rani pothileke annum daagum enna ana. So let us see what is death. What is death and how the death happened to the people, to the, to the man, the human being? We know that death is the consequence of sin. Death is the consequence of sin, both the physical and the spiritual death. You know, when uh, Adam and Eve, they were doing sin and they were fallen, when before that, they were not knowing anything about the death. They did not know what is death. But after that, after the fall, after the sin, you know, they understood that this is the death. Okay. There will be a physical death and there will be a spiritual death. Okay, So the spiritual death and the physical death is the consequence of sin. That is what we read in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. The wages of sin is death. Okay, So the wages of sin is death. So only because of the sin or because of the fall, because of the disobedience, the 
the physical and the spiritual death came into being. So that's what we read, that the wages of the sin is death. But on that day, death will be thrown into the lake of fire. That means no more death. No more death. There is no death again. Nobody is going to die after that judgment. So this punishment also is known as second death in chapter 20, verse 15. This is the second death. Okay, That means the first death is our physical death. First death is our physical death. And the second one is going to be the last death in which the unbelievers and satanic army will be thrown into the lake of fire, which is also known as the eternal punishment. Okay, but we, the believers, are not to fear the first death. Okay, so there are, there are many people, they are fearing or they are scared about the death, the physical death. Okay, they're scared about the physical death because, but we don't want to scare about or we don't want to fear the physical death because we know that when a believer dies, he loses nothing and one day we will be resurrected, right? Okay, even if we die in this world, when we know that one day we will be resurrected, okay? So that is the belief, that is the faith of a believer, hallelujah. And even, you know, one day we'll be resurrected and also, but the unbelievers must fear both the first death and the second death because they don't have any other option to escape from the eternal punishment. Okay, The unbelievers, they don't have any other option after death. Okay, If they are getting the first death or if they are dying, the, the, if, 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 if the first death is happening or physical death is happening to the unbeliever, they doesn't have any other option to escape from the eternal punishment. But we, the people, I mean, those who are dying, maybe once in this physical, I mean, body, I mean, we will, we will have that hope and we have that belief in God that we will be resurrected one day. I mean, so that is our faith and that is our hope. I mean, so we will not be going through the eternal punishment. And also, especially in Revelation chapter 20, verse 15, it says that the names of those not found written in the book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire. You know, when we study about this eternal punishment or the lake of fire, the, the, the place of torment uh, and all those things, there are many people, they are rejecting the biblical doctrine of hell as being unchristian. That means they say, that, okay, this is not a Christian thing. This is not a godly thing that uh, uh, always you are, I mean, you are, you are, you are saying about uh, the lake of fire, the hell and everything. You know, many people deny the concept, concept of eternal punishment. They don't believe in, in, in eternal punishment or in hell. You know, even, even some people are believing that there is a, there is a what is that uh, uh, annihilationism. That means, you know, uh, after, the, after the wicked have suffered the penalty of God's wrath for a time period, God will annihilate them so that they no longer exist or they will not be punished eternally. That means after a, 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 a small period or a, or a bracket period of, I mean, God's wrath as a penalty of their, I mean, wickedness of the, as the penalty of their sin, you know, those people will be, I mean, uh, I mean, dying and they, those people will not be existing anymore. That means that there will not be any punishment eternally. But Jesus clearly taught that it's, it's a reality. The hell is a reality. That is going to happen. The punishment is a reality because God is, God is a justice judge and he's a righteous judge. Okay? In Matthew and uh, uh, in Mark also, there are many references given there. Okay? Why it is written? It, it, it is to show that the hell or the lake of fire is a reality and that is going to happen. And the wicked people, the sinner, sinning people, and I mean, Satan and satanic army all will be cast into the lake of fire and the hell. These are the verses which you can prove that this is a reality. And also, you know, some of the people like the, 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 the what is that, the sentimental kind of uh, humanistic religion. Okay, there are, there are many religious people and there are many uh, people, those who are having sentiments and they are saying, uh, there is no hell. We can't believe that there is a hell. Okay, so, uh, you know, they are not <coughs> believing in the reality of the judgment of God. But they teach about a, about a God who loves everyone. 
and a, a God who is, I mean, bringing all the people of this world into heaven and sends no one to hell. And they believe that, okay, they are the religious people, that humanistic religious people, they say, no, 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 our God, the living God is not a, not a, not a person who is I mean, judging the people or uh, putting the people into the, into the lake of fire or hell, you know, because God is a God, is a loving God. And this is that. But let me, let me tell you one thing about what is hell? What is hell? Okay, hell is a witness to the righteous character of God. What is hell? You know, in, when, we, when, you, when you go through the Bible, there is, a, there is a total meaning of the hell. That is this, that hell is a witness to the righteous character of God. That means God has a righteous character. Okay, this is the attribute of God. God is righteous. Okay, so hell, if there is a hell and that hell is the witness to the righteous character of God. That means he must judge the sinful people and he must judge the sin. Hell is also a witness to man's responsibility. The fact that he is not a robot or a helpless victim, but a creature able to make choices. You know, God created man and God said, this is there and that is there. You can select, you can choose which is best. Okay, so everything is there. You know, when uh, uh, God was placing Adam and Eve into, into, the, into, the, into, the, into the garden of Eden, God said, I mean, there are many fruits, but you should not eat the fruit of this tree, but you can eat the fruit of all other trees. So the, the choice is there. <clears throat> The free will is there. So the free will, the option of free will is given to the people. But the, the thing is, you know, he was thinking that okay, I'm a robot. I cannot do anything. So I'm a helpless victim. But, but we have to understand hell is also a witness to man's responsibility. I mean, every man, every man has a responsibility to choose which is right or bad. Okay, differentiate the right or bad. And he can choose one thing. Okay, which is the right thing. Okay, so, so we have the choice. So God does not send any, anyone to the hell. Rather, they send themselves by rejecting the Savior. So God doesn't want to send any of the people into the hell. At the same time, the people, the sinners, okay, the wicked people, they are choosing for that. And they themselves are I mean, I mean, going to the hell by rejecting the Savior, Jesus Christ. And again, what is hell? Hell is also a witness to the awfulness of sin. Hell is also a witness to the awfulness of sin. That means, if we want so sin as God sees it, we would understand why a place such as hell exists. Okay? So, we need to know what is the dangerous situation of the sin and what is the wages of sin then we will understand, oh, there is a need of hell. There is a need of hell because that much is that much horrible is the sinful life of a person. So that's the reason that God arranged hell for the wicked people, the unbelieving world. Okay. You know, usually people are asking, especially the, the atheist, okay, they are asking a question that if God is a loving God and if God is a for, forgiving God, then why he is putting the people into hell and torturing them. This is a common question that many of the people, especially the atheist people are asking, oh, you are believing in a living God. You are believing in an almighty God, holy God, a forgiving God, a loving God. Then the question is why that God, the loving God, why the forgiving God is putting the people, the innocent people into the hell or the or why they are tormented in the in the in the lake of fire you know these people they believe that hell is too severe a punishment for men's sin you know but according to the salvation plan of god when you when you read bible we understand no loss to sinner can blame god for casting him into hell because god has provided a way of escape patiently waiting for sinners to repent so god has arranged everything so God arranged the plan of salvation, but and, and, and God is waiting for the people, for the sinners to repent about their sins and let them come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. So he will not lower his standard 
or alter his requirements. Yeah? And he has ordained that faith in his son is the only way of salvation. You know, there are I mean, many people are thinking God may change uh, his decisions or God may uh, lower his standard or God may alter his requirements. Okay, so there is no alteration work in the plan of salvation for God because when God has I mean, appointed everyone, everyone, that if you are accepting Jesus as your personal savior and you can be a child of God, you will become a child of God. That's what, that is, that is a requirement of a person according to the Bible. And he has ordained that faith in his son that is only the way of salvation. Without believing in Jesus Christ, you cannot be a saved person. You cannot be delivered from the righteous of the sin. Okay, so the reality is God has already provided the knowledge about the living God and the way of salvation to all in various ways. Okay, like, uh, you know, Jesus Christ is there, the word of God is there, or ministers of God are there, creation of God is there, from the nature and the through their own conscience, you can understand there is a God. So God has provided many things for the people to understand that there is a living God. There is a living God. There are many options. There are many medias through which we could understand there is a, there is a living God. No? And we know that sin is a willful opposition to God and our creator. Okay? God is our creator. And when we do sin, that is a willful opposition to God. Often, God doesn't send people to, to the hell. Rather, they choose it. They choose it. That's why uh, Apostle Paul uh, wrote in Romans chapter uh, chapter 1, verses 21 and 25. Uh, can you read that verses, uh, maybe uh, Elsa? Romans chapter 1, verses 21 and 25. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But yeah. they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Verse 25. Because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped, worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Amen. What is that? Even though they knew God, did not honor him as God, they became, I mean, futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened and they worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. You know, this is the this is the utter failure of the human being, of the uh, or the sinners. You know, they know there is a God, and they know that there is a living God. At the same time, they are not ready to worship that real God. They are not worship, uh, not ready to. I mean, worship that uh, when original God or the the Creator God. Okay, but they are worshiping the creatures, man-made creatures. They are worshiping the creature of creatures of this world and they are worshiping the images which is made by the human being with, with the hands of the human okay and there, there is a creator there is a creator god but they are not worshiping him but god has provided many ways and many many options and many medias to the people to believe in god and to know about the saving knowledge of jesus christ but they are not I mean, accepting that they are rejecting that Okay. And also, Almighty God is a righteous judge. Okay. Our God is a righteous judge. So he needs to keep his word. Okay. So if God is a righteous God or righteous judge, he needs to keep his word. Right. That's why he is casting the unrepented sinners into the hell and the saints of God into the eternal life. So this is going to happen when Jesus Christ will cast all the unrepentant sinners into the hell and the saints of God to the eternal life. And now we will have to know about the, what are the characteristics of the lake of fire or I mean, characteristics of the hell. Okay, And this one also, I'm not going to explain all those points because <coughs> there are almost eight points are there. But uh, I mean, you can take it down, these points. What are the characteristics of the lake of fire okay what are the characteristics so what is what is going to happen in the in the hell what is going to happen in the hell and what will be taking place in hell and uh, how the people those who are uh, cast into the hell are going to 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 i mean uh, to suffer
for sure this is going to happen in the hell okay for those who are <laughs> getting for the getting for <clears throat> got it to go to hell when these things will be there but we people are not going for that we people are i mean heading into the into the heaven and we will not be having any kinds of these problems in there and we will be always uh, i mean uh, living with jesus christ and we will be enjoying with jesus christ i mean but these are the things which is going to happen and which is going to be there in hell okay and this place okay let me let me just read out all those points the place of complete darkness okay we are not going to read those verses because of the lack of time okay the place of complete darkness okay in matthew chapter 25 verse 50 it says that it's an outer darkness okay malayalathil parnjirikkina purathulla irutta na parnju purathulla irutta outer darkness aanu okay the place of complete darkness it will be completely a darkness in hell that means there is no light but in heaven there is no need of light because jesus is the light right we understand that right if jesus is the light okay so we will be the light in heaven because there is no other other need of any other light or lamp in heaven but in in hell it will be completely darkness and secondly the unquenchable fire will be there nana kedata thee undayirikkum kedata thee narakathil undayirikkum unquenchable fire ായിരിക്കും വേംസ് വിൽ ബി ദർ ചാകാത്ത പുഴു ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കും ഒരിക്കലും ചാകാത്ത പുഴു ഒന്ന് ഓർത്ത് നോക്കി ഈ പുഴുക്കളെല്ലാം കൂടെ നമ്മുടെ ദേഹത്തോടെ അഴിഞ്ഞഴിഞ്ഞ് വരുവാണെങ്കിൽ എന്തൊരു കഷ്ടപ്പാടായിരിക്കും അവിടെ ജീവിക്കാനായിട്ട് സോ ലിസൺ യുനോ ദർ വിൽ ബി അൺ ഡൈങ് വേംസ് ദ വേംസ് വിൽ നോട്ട് ഡൈ ദറ്റ് മീൻസ് ഹൊറബിൾ പ്ലേസ് വിൽ ബി ദാറ്റ് ഇൻ ഹെൽ ആൻഡ് വീപ്പിംഗ് വിൽ ബി ദേർ ഓൾ ദി പീപ്പിൾ എപ്പോഴും കരച്ചില് ദെൻ നാഷിങ് ഓഫ് ടീത്ത് ദ പല്ലുകടി ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കും കരച്ചിലും പല്ലുകടിയും കെടാത്ത പുഴു ചാകാത്ത ചാകാത്ത പുഴു കെടാത്ത തീയ വിപ്പിംഗ് നാഷിംഗ് ഓഫ് ടീത്ത് ആൻഡ് പ്ലേസ് ഓഫ് ഫ്ലെയിംസ് മെൻ ഒത്തിരി എന്താ പറയുന്ന ഈ ഫ്ലെയിംസ് ഒത്തിരി ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കും ദെൻ പ്ലേസ് ഓഫ് ബേണിങ് കത്തുന്ന നരകമായിരിക്കും കത്തുന്ന സ്ഥലമായിരിക്കും ഫുൾ ഓഫ് ടോർമെന്റ് ഫുൾ ഓഫ് ടോർമെന്റ് മീൻസ് ഓൾവേസ് ദർ വിൽ ബി ഐ മീൻ ടോർമെന്റേഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഓൾവേസ് പീപ്പിൾ വിൽ ബി ടോർച്ചേഡ് ബൈ ഓൾ ദീസ് ഫയർ ആൻഡ് ദ വേംസ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾ ദീസ് തിങ്സ് വിച്ച് ഈസ് ഇൻ ഹെൽ so totally by reading all these verses and understanding all these points and knowing the characteristics of hell it is very clear that the hell is going to be a horrible conscious punishment okay that god has arranged it already god has arranged it already the hell and the, the situation of the hell is going to be horrible and we understand that it is going to be a horrible conscious punishment that means already god has appointed the the punishment for the wicked people those who are rejecting jesus christ but we should realize what is our opportunity what is our privilege that we got a chance to believe in jesus christ and we became the children of god hallelujah we should realize the immensity of the evil and sin and the rebellion against god okay what is the meaning of immensity വലിയ ആ വലിപ്പം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അതിന്റെ വ്യാപ്തി അതിന്റെ ഐ മീൻ വലിയ ആ വലിയ അതിന്റെ വലിപ്പത്തെ നമ്മൾ മനസ്സിലാക്കുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് ഇമൻസിറ്റി വട്ട് ഇസ് എ ഇമൻസിറ്റി ഓഫ് ദ ഈവൺ ആൻഡ് ദ സിൻ ആൻഡ് വെൻ എ പേഴ്സൺ ഈസ് റിബല്ലിംഗ് അഗൈൻസ്റ്റ് ഗോഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് വെരി ഡേഞ്ചറസ് അറ്റ് ദ സെയിം ടൈം ദർ ഇസ് എ മാഗ്നിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ്സ് ഹോളിനെസ് ആൻഡ് ജസ്റ്റിസ് വട്ട് ഇസ് എ മാഗ്നിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ആ വ്യാപ്തി ദൈവത്തിന്റെ ആ വിശുദ്ധിയുടെയും ജസ്റ്റിസിന്റെയും നീതിയുടെയും ആ വ്യാപ്തി എത്രത്തോളം ഉണ്ട് വട്ട് ഇസ് എ മാഗ്നിറ്റ്യൂഡ് ഓഫ് ഗോഡ്സ് ഹോളിനെസ് ആൻഡ് ജസ്റ്റിസ് ആസ് അവർ ഗോഡ് ഈസ് ഹോളി ആൻഡ് ഹി ഇസ് റൈറ്റസ് ഹി മസ്റ്റ് ജഡ് ദ സീനിയർസ് അതർവൈസ് ഹി വിൽ ബിക്കം ആൻഡ് അൺറൈറ്റസ് ജഡ്ജ് റൈറ്റ് അവർ ജീസസ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ആൻ അൺറൈറ്റസ് ജഡ്ജ് 
but Jesus is the righteous judge. Okay? Jesus is the righteous judge. So he will have to punish the people, those who are sinning, and he will have to punish the unbelieving world. So let it be our desire and prayer when as we are attending in this class, when those people who most severely persecute the church should come to the faith in Jesus Christ. And thus they will be escaped from the eternal condemnation. Let us also pray for all the people, those who are, I mean, in our in our relatives, maybe our friends or our neighbors or somebody, let's pray for them that they also could be escaped from the eternal condemnation in the coming days. I mean, now, as we are going to wind up our today's class, I mean, I would, write, I would request uh, all of you to open your Bible and let us turn our attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 3, verses 12 to 15, we are going to read. Okay, We are going to read, maybe we are going to spend a few minutes as we are winding up the classes of today. We are going to spend a few minutes with that portion and studying about the Bema seat of Christ the be mass seat of Christ. With that, we will close our class today. Okay? So I believe that God has something to share with us this evening from that portion also. Okay, The be mass seat of Christ. So let us read uh, that portion. Yes. Uh, let us read that portion now. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15. Yeah. Listen. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation of with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one work will manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. And if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive reward. If anyone if anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved but only as to fire. Okay. You know, we have, to, we have to look into that portion very attentively because it's an important, it's an important portion in a believer's life to think about before we do something for God or in the church. Okay. So listen, you know, when you study about this point, think about the Bema seat is taken from the Greek word for judgment. Okay, it's nothing. Bema is the word in, in Greek, which, which, is, uh, mentioned, which is mentioned in the Greek Bible, uh, which the meaning of that Bema is the judgment. Okay, so the Bema seat means uh, the seat or the, or the throne where Jesus is going to sit to, to make the uh, rewarding for the believers. Okay. Uh, and then വിഭാഗിക്കാൻവേണ്ടിയിരിക്കുന്നിരിക്കുന്നിരിക്കുന്നിരിക്കുന്നിരിക്കുന്നിരിക്കുന്നിരിക്കുന്നിരിക്കു
uh, the, 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 the medals or the, or the rewards or the awards or the crowns for the people, those who win. That means the people, those who overcome the world and worldly pleasures and the people, those who are raised to the heaven and God, Jesus is going to, I mean, I mean distribute the awards for those people. And here Apostle Paul is mentioning about some of the common and opposite kinds of materials. Okay, some of the common and opposite kinds of materials. The first group of material, what is that? The first group of material, which is mentioned in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, is gold, silver, precious stones. Okay, gold, silver, precious stones. What is that? What is the meaning of that? What is the, what is the spiritual meaning of that? It, it is going to be the permanent thing, beautiful, valuable, hard to obtain. Okay? Gold, silver, and precious stones will be there. That means gold and silver and precious stones means it is a permanent thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's a valuable thing and hard to obtain. Okay? At the same time, the second group of material, the second group of material which is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 to 15, wood, hay, and straw. Okay, and this wood, hay, and straw is easily passing, easily consumable, easily, I mean, it's, it's a temporary thing, it's an ordinary thing, it's an ugly thing, it's a cheap thing, and it is easy to obtain. What are the things which is mentioned there in chapter 3? You know, in Malalam, it is written like this. Okay, so these are the things that which is mentioned there. Okay? These are the opposite when materials which I mean Apostle Paul is mentioning there. Okay, the, the, the silver will be there, gold will be there, precious stone will be there, wood will be there, hay will be there, and straw will be there. Okay, think about what kind of judgment it could be. Think about what kind of judgment it could be, okay? So in my perspective, or, or according to my understanding of First Corinthians 3, verses 12 to 15, here Paul talks about building off of a Christian church and a congregation. And also, we can see there are different ministries or different gifts and different talents, different responsibilities given to the pastors, leaders, and each believer. You know, every pastor, every leader, every, every believer is filled with many of the ministries and gifts and talents. There are many responsibilities given to the believer and the pastor or the leaders. Okay, the first thing that we must keep in our mind when we do something in our church, okay, is let Jesus be the foundation. Very, very carefully listen to this word this, this evening because when I mean, God wanted to tell something which is very serious about the believers, okay? And what should be our focus, okay? So the first thing, you know, we are the people, we are doing many things for the Lord in church and outside the church, okay? First of all, first of all, keep in your mind that, I mean, let Jesus be the foundation of our church. Let Jesus be the foundation of our life, of our, I mean, of our do, deeds or works, okay? You know, nowadays in many churches, the people are destroying their pastors and leaders, Okay, by giving more importance for, for the pastors or leaders. And sometimes some of the leaders becomes the foundation of the church instead of Jesus Christ, the corner and the founder, I mean foundation stone. We know that Jesus Christ is the foundation stone, right? We know that Jesus Christ is the corner stone, no one else. Okay, but some sometimes in some churches, when some of the pastors or the leaders or some of the prominent people are becoming the foundation of the church and they are saying, okay, we are the foundation of this church. But it should not happen that Jesus be the foundation of every church, every church. So let us not lay any other foundation other than Jesus. That is the second thing. You know, let us not lay any other foundation other than Jesus Christ. That is very clearly written in this chapter 3, First Corinthians chapter 3. Secondly, let us build our church on the foundation stone, which is Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is the foundation stone. And let us all build the church on the foundation, on the foundation, which is Jesus Christ. Thirdly, thirdly, let our doctrines be strong and valuable like the gold or silver or a precious stone. Our faith is valuable. Our doctrine is valuable. 
no why apostle paul is mentioning about gold or silver or precious stone only because when the christian's doctrine or the faith of a christian must be strong and must be valuable and it is it is precious in the sight of god so let it not be the the wood or hay or straw which was easily faded away or consumed by the fire because in verse 13 in verse 13 says that when fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. Then the fire, which is going to happen that day during the time of the Bema seat of judgment of Jesus Christ, the fire itself will test the qualify, test the quality of each man's work. You know, let me tell you one thing. As a pastor, I don't want to judge anybody or check the quality or quantity of what you are doing in the church. Or I don't want to make any comment on any of your work that you are doing in connection with the church. Okay, Because I know I'm nobody to do that. And if I do that, it is sure that you are going to point your finger on me and surely will make some comments about me because nobody is perfect in this world. So knowing that, I don't want to judge anybody i don't want to make a comment about when what you are doing because we all are doing many things in the church right this is the this is the system of the word of god you know we all are doing many things in the church okay some people are doing something and some other people are doing something you know everyone they are working together they are working hard to make it possible you know you are putting your effort okay one person is putting his own effort and spending time Everything, everything. Let's bring everything in the hands of God. And let me tell you one thing. I'm not, nobody to judge your work, but there is a God. There is a God. He will judge all the works of the people. But I know one thing. There is a day coming up. There is a day coming up. Jesus, the righteous judge, will sit on the bema seat where all our works will be test, tested by the fire. And that test will prove what we did for God in our earthly life. Okay. You know, I was just wondering when I was preparing this note for this today's class, that even in the first century itself, Apostle Paul knew that these types of people will be there in 21st century also. Amen. So these kinds of people will be there in 21st century also, even when in the first century, Apostle Paul was writing this letter of First Corinthian, he was knowing that these kinds of people who is having the mentality, even there were many leaders and believers in the days of Paul with this kind of mentality. Okay, so I will give you just maybe uh, uh, one example for uh, from Paul's epistle itself. Yeah, the same epistle, First Corinthian, First Corinthian chapter maybe uh, one, chapter one, First Corinthians chapter one, verses twenty-seven to twenty-nine. Elsa, can you can you read that verse maybe? First Corinthians God. chapter. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing that are, so that no humans being might boast in the presence of God. Amen. Logatil Belahim and Maitrejer to Ulla the Nila, Miaqua, and the Logatil Polyhinavum, the Scristo Maida, either will Lato the Renier to the US and Ethil Urijadavum Prasham Shikadri Kenda the Netane. So in verse twenty nine, it says that here we he wrote like this so that no man may boast before God. Okay? Is there anything that we can we can boast in the presence of God? Nothing is there. We cannot boast anything about ourselves. Okay. Again, in the maybe in the in the book of James also, in the book of James, chapter four, verse sixteen, we are not going to read that verse. Okay. In in book of James, chapter four, verse sixteen, Apostle James also wrote that. I mean, you, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. I mean, no matter what, in that, I mean, I mean, hungry, can do. I mean, you. I mean, the character of the society can do. You guys, you guys, that means, prashamsi can do. That that type of area, man, in the Apostle James also said. Okay, so you know, when when we study the Christendom today, now some pastors and believers used to say, "Oh, I did that uh, for the church, and I did this for the church, and I did more than that believer or that pastor," and they boast in that. Okay, whatever they are doing, they are boasting in that. Okay, but Bible says on the day of judgment, Jesus will prove 
whether you did it with the right intention or a wrong intention. This is what is very important to understand whatever we are doing in the church and whatever we are doing for the name of the Lord. I mean, there is a day, there is a day of judgment that Jesus will prove whether you did it with a right intention or a wrong intention. Dear brothers and sisters, now we are doing many things for the church and for the kingdom of God. I mean, we are spending money. We are giving the tithe, putting offering, contributing a good amount of money. When we are taking a collection, we are spending our time. We are spending our energy. We are using our talent or gift. We are preaching. We are doing evangelism. Everything is absolutely right. And it is, it is biblical. But God knows with what intention we are doing that thing. Okay. There is a day that God is going to God is going to judge the things, the works of a, works of a believer. I mean, remember one thing: it's not important how much capable you are in doing something; rather, how much sincere you are in doing that work. God is looking for the intention behind your work. I mean, sometimes we are thinking, okay, "I'm capable enough to do that." Okay, I can do that, and I am the only person that I can do that. But God is not looking the capability of doing that, but God is looking for the sincere people to do that with a dedication. I mean, with a dedication, okay, without a compulsion, without a force, are you ready to do that? When this is what God is expecting, when God is looking for the intention behind your work. Hallelujah. So I, I understand from this verse that this Bema seat of Jesus Christ is going to be a process of test, okay, with fire. This is a process of test with the fire, but we do not know how it is going to happen okay? or how Jesus is going to work out or Jesus is going to conduct this judgment. It may take one second for one person or many days for one person or many years or in one second, everyone will be tested. We do not know how God, Jesus is going to conduct that judgment, but it could be, I can understand that it could be an allegorical presentation of Apostle Paul about the bema seat of judgment, like Jesus, okay, sitting on the seat as a judge, and the fire comes, the wax of the believers done with the perishable materials like wood or hay or straw burned up, okay, but the wax of the believers done with the valuable and the permanent and with gold and with a good intention, okay, gold or silver or precious stones will be rewarded with some crowns, and we are waiting for that rewarding ceremony in the coming days. Hallelujah. So in my understanding, we will not lose our salvation, but we may lose some of our rewards or crowns after this process. Okay, This is a process which is based on our works on this earth. And what is going to happen? You know, Because this judgment or ceremony is going to happen in heaven. So there is no doubt that we will reach heaven or not. But after reaching there, after reaching in heaven, during the time of the rewarding, Bible says some will be ashamed, but some will be blessed with the crowns. Hallelujah. Let us pray. I mean, actually, I have a few more I mean, things to share with you I mean, related to this same topic about maybe rewarding or, I mean, uh, or the saints or the, the crowns or something. And if God allows, I will uh, preach about I mean, that, uh, all those things, maybe one day, maybe on a, on a, on a, on a Sunday. I mean, but I mean, let me let me conclude my message or the class this evening that I mean, there is there is a God who is going to judge the believers even. No, we will have to go through the judgment. We will have to go through the judgment. One day, the Bema seat will be there. Jesus will be sitting there as a, as a judge. And he is a, I mean, righteous judge. I mean, God is not looking how capable you are to do something, but God is looking how sincere when you're doing something for the church or for, for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. God is looking always, I mean, how you are doing that and with, with, with what intention that you are doing that. Amen. So let us all submit us with the mighty hand of God. We are waiting for that. Hallelujah. And we will be, we will be rewarded. Whatever we are doing, whatever when money we are spending, whatever energy we are spending, whatever, I mean, things or items that we are spending for the church, for the uplifting of the people of God, when God is not looking the, the amount of that, God is not looking, I mean, and, and sometimes we are boasting that I did that, I did that. But God says that it's not that you did that, 
I mean, only because of my health, because of my power, you did it, but is it only because of the good intention or bad intention? So God is looking only for the intention behind what we are doing. So let us all submit us with the mighty hand of God. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, I need to be ready. I need to be ready for, for your second coming, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ, I'm waiting for the awarding ceremony, Lord. We are waiting for that I mean, awarding ceremony. God, Jesus is going to give us the awards. God, Jesus is going to, I mean, give us the medals, I mean, that the crowns for the people of God, those who are doing, I mean, everything in this year, I mean, according to the will of God, according to the purpose of God and surrendered in the hands of God and those who are having that intention in their heart that, oh Lord, I need to be perfect in the presence of God. I need to be faithful in the presence of God. I need to be sincere in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let us all submit also with the mighty hand of God this evening and let us pray together, especially, I mean, uh, let us uh, meditate the word of God at the same time. Let us pray for, uh, I mean,